Hey, hey, party people. You've probably heard me say in many videos that a designer needs a firm understanding of their customer. In my first How to Start a Fashion Company video, I elaborated on the why. And in this video, I want to focus on the how. Here is the number one misunderstanding about market research. When to do it. A lot of companies, both in fashion and not, spend a ton of energy, money, and time into building a product, and then they're like, okay, who do we get to buy it? Let's hire some marketing people to find us a customer. No. No. And no. But also, no. You don't make a thing and expect people to appreciate your genius and buy it. You research the market, see what's out there, see what's not out there, see what's needed, and produce things that can help people get dressed in the morning, help people fall in love with fashion, help people express themselves through clothes. Okay? And that starts with figuring out who specifically your customer is. First, let's talk about how you define a customer. Some of the things to think about are, one, gender. Men's wear, women's wear, unisex, you know. Uh, two, age group, kids, preteen, 20s, more grown up adults. You know, don't get too broad. The point of defining a customer is to provide focus when you're designing. Okay? Special note on kids' wear, children's wear your customer is actually twofold. Okay? Your clothes have to appeal to the kid and to the parent doing the buying. Number three, income and price point. One will generally inform the other. Four, body type and size. Maybe you'll focus on a particular range of sizes. Maybe you'll focus on a particular body type. Okay, top heavy, bottom heavy. Maybe you'll be size inclusive and offer a ton of sizes, right? So number five is lifestyle, living environment, and everyday activities. Are these for people who spend a ton of time outdoors? Do these people dress up a lot? Do they live in yoga pants? Do they have any physical capabilities that involve their everyday? Like, are they in a wheelchair, for example? Um, and focus on how these people are going to use your product. For example, if you want to design luggage, think about how your customer travels. Number six, what is their attitude towards fashion and getting dressed? What is their attitude towards clothes, getting dressed for work, dressing up for events? You know, and of course, again, this depends on what category you're designing. At number seven, do they partake in special activities that require specific garments, hiking boots, raincoats, nursing bras? Number eight, how do they value things? Is price the most important thing? Is not looking like everybody else the most important thing? Is super convenient shopping the most important thing? Do they buy by trend or do they shop for investment pieces? Number nine, who is your competition? If you want to make skin tone lingerie for people of color, who's in that game? Who's doing something similar? How can you be better than them? Number 10, who else is your customer wearing? What else is your customer wearing? Let's say you're making party shoes. If your customer is going out on a date and wearing your shoes, what brands of clothes, jewelry, other accessories, hats, purses, what have you, what other things is this customer wearing so that you can create a complete picture in your mind of your customer? And then related to your customer profile, how do you reach your customer? Is it podcast ads, social media, TV ads, QVC, private parties? What does it cost to reach them? What media do they consume and how do they shop? You want to create a story. You want to create a customer's life. 
Okay, let's talk about a couple of different approaches. Okay? Some of you will start with a concept. Let's flesh out a concept with the customer profile with the questions I just listed. Let's say my idea is a maternity rent-to-own subscription service. Pregnant customers get a new box every month, assuming their bellies have outgrown their previous clothes. You send back things you've outgrown, you keep the pieces you can still fit or want to keep permanently, like maybe some loose dresses or pajamas. Maybe you're pregnant during the holidays and need some cute things that work around your seven-month belly, and you're only going to wear that once. So who's my customer? Pregnant people. The majority being, not all, but the majority being in their 20s and 30s middle-class income, someone who doesn't have the funds to buy a whole new wardrobe for a short period of time and then toss it all. So a moderate price point. Body type would, of course, uh, focus on accommodating growing bellies. And my customer wants to be comfortable but stylish. They're still going to work at an office and going to yoga, dinner with friends. They have hobbies. They run errands. They want to look cute on Instagram. They want to look cute at their baby shower, that sort of thing. And I want to start small. So I want to start with maybe party dress rentals specifically for pregnant bodies and eventually expand into other clothing categories. So given my example, customer, and business idea, how do I research whether or not my idea has legs? Research rental services for clothes like Rent the Runway. Read up on their pricing, their terms, and how they do business. Read any reviews you can find on these services. What are people loving? What are people hating? What are some of the things that you can fix? Research subscription services. Research the maternity market. What is out there? What are the styles that already exist? Go to these shopping sites. You can sort by uh, best-selling or most popular when you go on those shopping sites. And read the reviews. And what are some of the common complaints or compliments? Once you've got the names of some maternity lines, look for news stories involving these companies. See if they are growing, if they're involved in some controversy, if they're getting good publicity for a specific thing, all kinds of stuff. Talk to people who are currently pregnant or have been pregnant before. You can create online surveys on websites like SurveyMonkey and spread that survey far and wide and ask your friends to spread it around too. Join some parenting forums and be upfront. Hi, everyone. I want to create a better product and service for pregnant people. Can you help me by answering some questions? And be kind and patient with some people who may complain a little, you know, extra passionately. <laughs> And take notes as you research. And the more you learn, you'll probably end up tweaking your customer profile and your business plan. Another way to define your customer is to take a category that you already like to design and see where in the market you can make your entrance. Let's say that you love designing denim and you want to enter this massively competitive market in a special way. So what do you do? Research denim. Go to where your preferences lie to start. Women's wear, men's wear, general aesthetics. See what's in the market. Look for what's missing. Look for who is not being catered to. Since fit is such a big deal with denim, more so than a lot of other categories, think about what size demographic, what body types are not being served. What are various ways you can make denim more sustainable? Levi's has started incorporating hemp, combining hemp and cotton in their denim. I'm kind of waiting to see how that sells. Side note, sustainability is not a trend. It's the future of fashion. Like I mentioned before, make a survey. Talk to tons of people. Shop that market. Go online, but also shop in brick and mortar stores and feel the fabrics, try on the clothes, see what's not selling and ended up in the sales section. I love denim, I love designing jeans and pants, and I have noticed that short and short-legged people are ignored in the market. To be fair, 
It is easier to cut long pants than it is to add fabric to the ends of pants, but the petite's market is ignored, and short people do have different proportions, not just shorter legs. So in my example scenario here, my customer is shorter women, 5'5 five, five and shorter, late 20s to late 40s. My customer has been out of school and working for a while and understands the beauty of having a few quality pieces that really work for them instead of a lot of cheap, trendy throwaways. So we're talking $250 to $600 per pair of pants. They want their butts to look good, they want their legs to look longer, and they don't want to worry about their underwear hanging out. In terms of attitude towards fashion, I want to give this customer an opportunity to wear all the high fashion styles that they don't always get access to without a ton of tailoring. I'm going to start with two fit categories, a more average waist to hip ratio, and then another fit that's roomier in the butt and thighs, and possibly add more fit categories later on. Because I'm entering on a, such a narrow niche, I can play with day looks and evening looks like different styles within my customer's needs. And then somewhere in the product development process, I'd make a bunch of jeans in different sizes and ask a bunch of short women to wear them and give me feedback. Now that you have hopefully a better idea as to how to identify a customer, I wanna touch briefly on the difference between a muse and a customer. A muse is someone or something that inspires you to create. In my Badass Grandma project, my original muse was this incredible little Asian lady I saw riding a Huffy bike down the street. And she was wearing this awesome mismatched outfit. And I, I was instantly inspired. And then I came home and started looking up pictures of other Asian grandmas and grandpas looking super cool. <laughs> this IDGAF aesthetic inspired me to create this collection, but these grandmas are not my customer. Sometimes your muse and customer can be the same person, but they don't have to be. If we go back to the examples I used before, maybe you pin some photos of short, stylish people on a cork board and they inspire you or short celebrities with style that you admire, stylish pregnant people, et cetera, et cetera. I always recommend that companies start their social media before they launch their first collection. And I know I'm not the only one who recommends this. Open accounts in your company's name and start posting. You wanna build up hype, build up excitement, intrigue. As you start getting followers, ask them questions. Throw out fun surveys and polls that slowly, bit by bit, start giving you a better idea as to who is getting interested in your company. Like let's say you know, you're doing the short pants and you start throwing out there that you wanna cater pants and skirts specifically for shorter women and you start getting people interested, then once they start following you on social media, you can start developing relationships with your potential customers and start asking them about things that they want. By opening up this relationship to listen to the people who are interested in your aesthetic, you can build a product better suited to your customer. The alternative is to have your first collection ready to go with zero people who have heard of you, zero people following you on Instagram, zero people interested in what you're doing, and you're just standing there trying to figure out what to do with these clothes you poured a ton of time, energy, and money producing, and you're not even sure if anyone wants it. Listen to me very carefully. Old school retail is dead. The era of the fashion dictator designer choosing for us what to wear is dead. And whether you love it or not, how you find commercial success in fashion today is one, you are a celebrity and people love your style. Two, you have celebrities pimping your brand. Three, you make sure you are producing goods that cater to an underserved market. Because even established brands have to be very careful about their marketing, who is wearing their stuff, who is used in ad campaigns, how they handle their social media, how their creative directors handle their own personal social media. 
all of that is very carefully done, even with the established brand. So if you don't even have an established brand, you have to work extra. What you need is a product that doesn't need a celebrity to sell it. Most of us do not have celebrities on hand to pimp our stuff. So you need to create something that the market is lacking. Fashion is like Swiss cheese, saturated, delicious, but full of holes. One of the most sustainable things you can do as a designer is offer up to the world a product people truly need and want, not some crap that's going to feed your ego and feed some more landfills. Here's another thing you probably don't want to hear, but it is the truth and it is my duty to prepare you. The harder something is, typically the more in demand something is because so many people don't want to do it. Eh? Who needs another t-shirt company? Maybe people in the largest sizes who are basically underserved in every category of clothing. But t-shirts are easy to make and there are one million t-shirt companies doing something vaguely different with vaguely different aesthetics using different business models. It's a matter of supply and demand. There's more demand for a product that is harder to make because fewer people are making them. Like well-tailored clothes or clothes for little people or, 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 okay? Often your customer starts defining or redefining itself in your first few seasons. And it is a balance. It's not about letting your customers dictate your every move and design decision. It's about your customers giving you clues to help you create a product that works for both of you. And that wraps up today's lecture. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new today. Drop your questions in the comment section below. Check the description box for links to related videos. Share this video. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And I will see you in the next video.